Hey guys, 30th of October here, second month of spring, 26 degrees Celsius, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Today we're going to be looking at a split from the green hive. We're also going to be looking at a split we've made from the orange hive. We'll be checking up on our newest hive in the apiary and how quiet they are. And we'll be checking up on our plastic frames. We've also got some huge news at the end of the video. So first off we'll check out our yellow hive. This is the hive that's got the black plastic frames in it. Hit them with some smoke. I'll get rid of that top box. It's basically absolutely full of honey. Weighs an absolute ton. So we're probably going to put another box on this hive today as well. So queen excluder off. You might remember that the queen had been stuck off to one side in between some black plastic frames. So what I've done is I've shuffled that one across. Now the queen started laying on those timber frames and they've actually started to work these black plastic frames a little bit. It's, they're just so slow. It just takes so much time to get them filled out. I've rubbed wax on them. I've done all the right things. I'm just over them. I'll push on with them just for giggles. We'll see what happens. But yeah, so a little bit of larvae in that one. This one here, again on one side, the queen's being laying out. There's a few eggs, not a lot of eggs but there's a few bits and pieces on it. I'll do a bit of a close-up of this once we've had a look at this other side. You can see this other side, there's really not a lot of anything happening. So the first side you can see here, juicy larvae, some eggs. They seem to be doing something with it. There's a lot of pollen in there. This hive's been jiggled about, swapped over frames over the last couple of months a fair bit. So they're a bit hodgepodge. Next timber frame bit of nectar this timber frame was on the outer I believe a couple of weeks ago so the Queen's finally shuffled over onto these timber frames and she seems to be doing a okay job the brood patterns really quite patchy but I think that's probably because most of the brood had hatched prior to her getting back onto the frames so she's laid out where she can this frame here plenty of eggs and larvae Again, a bit of a patchy laying pattern. This hive's really, you know, it almost looks like it's struggling, but I don't think it is. It's a bit of a, it's really just a test hive, this one. See how they're going. Check out the black plastic frames. She's a good queen, came from a swarm about two years ago. You see here, she's been laying out all the empty cells, so she's moving forward. Her population's down a little bit. It'll increase over the next couple of weeks. Not planning on getting too much more than a box of honey off these guys. Nice larvae in those cells. They're well-mannered bees. They're not too aggressive. They seem to be a little bit more aggressive once they've got a bit more brood and honey, but they're not really aggressive, these guys. This frame here, she's been all over this one. So that's been, it's been two weeks since she managed to get back onto these frames. So in two weeks she's laid out, what's that, four frames of brood. This hive also is in a quite shady place in the apiary. So it doesn't normally get morning sun until about 10 o'clock in the morning and I often wonder whether that's a contributing factor. Our other hives get full sun early in the morning. So this outer edge, again, plenty of eggs and larvae, cap cells. I'm happy the way these guys have recovered from not having the queen over on this side. Yeah, we'll pop this frame back in, shuffle them all across. Now I'm going to put a new box, a new honey super on this one. The top honey super is chock-a-block. So I've got a new box ready. We've been making a few boxes. We've tried a few different suppliers. We've had some hits and some misses. So new hardware on this box. We'll pop that one on, pop the top box on top of it, and check out the next hive. Now the next hive we're going to be looking at is the red hive. 
This is the 2021 Carniolan Queen. I don't believe she's been overwintered. Now these guys have been in here now for, this is their third week, but this half of the inspection is actually a week ago. So it's two inspections in one, this little component. So you see this last frame here is actually sort of drawn out, but there's really not a lot of action on it, half drawn out on this side. And you'll see a little bit later when we do the other inspection on this box, how much that's changed over a week. Now these guys are really calm. You can see they're not going from the hand. So off with the gloves. It's always good to practice beekeeping without gloves. Some of my other hives have been a little bit aggressive since they've started on the honey flow, but these guys are amazing. Don't be scared of beekeeping without gloves on. If you smoke your hands prior, take away some of your human scent. The bees are usually pretty good and it gives you a chance to actually move a lot slower with your frames. So this is one of the original nuke frames. You can see here a little bit of stores, some eggs. little bit of larvae but now they're doing really well so you, you can just move the frames more gently when you've got no gloves on find your finger position a little bit easier just so you don't bump them crush them I often find once you start crushing bees they tend to get a lot more angry and they'll go for you it's so much easier beekeeping without gloves you don't fumble picking up the frames and you certainly don't get the tips of your gloves caught underneath the frames when you're putting them back in. So now we fast forward one week and you can see the difference in this hive between then and now. A lot more bees on top, still really calm. I've got my gloves on because I've been going through all my hives. Plenty of bees in the air outside. So second frame in. They've drawn this one out all the way on one side, only a little bit on the other side. Now you remember the original video I did of this hive, though, bees were festooning on the bottom of this frame, so they've drawn that one out. The queen's laid this out. We'll see if we can find the queen in this box as well. Here's another half frame with a mid bar in it. You can also use these frames if you don't put the wax foundation, you can actually use them for queen rearing. You can put a double row of queen cells in there. I've tried some queen rearing before last year. It really wasn't successful. I might try it again with some of these eggs from this hive, but we'll see where we go. So yeah, pretty good brood pattern. This one looks a bit older, it's pretty dark. I'd assume there's a lot of eggs on there. There's a lot of bees covering them. So they're working those frames. And same here, so they've started to hatch. She's relayed that as well. I've got high hopes for this queen. I know the breeder. I know he has got a huge amount of hives, very sought after queens. And now this outer edge here. Yeah, so they've drawn that out. And there you go, there's our queen again, red marking. We've all had some discussions in the comments about whether that's the right color or not. We know it's not the right color. As I said, this guy just does random colors. I don't think he really cares. He tracks when his hives have been queened and when he's requeened them, so he knows what's going on. Keep good notes on your hives, guys, and then you can sort of tell when you've, how old your queen is, how long she's been in there. So yeah, I'll pop the lid back on this one. Can't wait to check it in a couple of weeks. And now we'll move on to our next inspection. Now this one is the orange hive. Now the orange hive, we're straight into this box. The footage on this next couple of hives isn't the greatest quality. I stopped videoing halfway through because I got quite busy with the bees and I really, you know, you've got to focus on the bees more than you have to focus on making videos, but I did get a fair bit of footage. 
So this is the honey box we put on two weeks ago. Plenty of nectar in that one. Looks like they're doing quite well. They've drawn out all these frames in two weeks and they've started filling, so I'm happy. So now we'll get straight into the bottom box, see what we can suss out. I haven't looked in the bottom box for a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And there you go. So queen cells in the center of the frame, most probably super seizure, maybe swarm cells. Those cups are actually full of larvae and full of royal jelly as well. So super seizuring isn't something I'm a fan of. I like to take more control over my hives. Uh, I suppose I have to make a plan with this hive what I want to do. So we'll continue having a look through it anyway. So great brood pattern here, good frame, capped. Couple more queen cells down the bottom. I'm going to knock down the majority of these queen cells. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet. I've got a couple there I can work with. This one's down the bottom, so it's a swarm cell. So my options right now with this hive are to close it up and let them sort it out. But potentially that could be a swarm because there's lower queen cells that are charged. It is possible that it's a super seizure, which they obviously think they need. But right now, I don't really want to leave that to the gods. I think, I think my other option is probably to make a split. They've got good population, plenty of bees. She's a good layer. If I make a split, well then I will definitely know in a few weeks if they still need to supersede you or swarm. So all these frames look like they're in pretty good nick. So many eggs, so much larvae. These guys are working, feeding the eggs in those uncapped cells, feeding the larvae. That's another charged queen cell there. Another one up the top. We're right in the second month of spring here. So it's to be expected that their population's right up. So I think it's about here where I realise, you know, there's another charged queen cell in there, queen cup, sorry. So I think this is about the time when I realise that I think the only thing to do is just to make a split. And look, if it simulates a swarm and it stops them making cells in this hive, all good. If they decide to make queens from those charged cells, all good. I'll probably let them do that, build up, and then requeen that hive. But yeah, so straight into making this split. So this is a bit of a jump forward. I'm going to take off those couple of frames that I know have got queen cells. Shake a few frames of bees in. I suppose the, the best thing you can do when you beekeep is really just... Don't be too hard on yourself. There are times when you'll do things that aren't the right things. And does it matter? Probably not. If you don't have a queen, if you kill a queen, if you lose a queen, if they swarm and they don't make a queen, you can always just pop a frame of eggs from a good hive into that hive that's queenless. You can buy queens. You can buy more bees. I strongly suggest running more than one hive. I suggest having two, even three hives. That way you've got bees that you can fall back on. You can equalize close to winter. You can move bigger frames but with more bees on them into smaller boxes. There's the queen there. I've just found her, so that's a good thing. I'll leave her aside, move through the other frames as I make this split. 
because the only thing with this split is there's a, not a lot of nectar or pollen. There is one frame that I find that's got some on it, but really there's not an absolute ton. We'll check up on this split in a second and check how it's going a few days in. Here it is all boxed up. It only ended up being a three frame split. Might need some feeding at some point. Might actually pop a queen in. We'll see how we go. So sorry about the amount of bees flying around the camera. I've just recently shaken out a couple of frames. But who doesn't like the sound of bees, eh? So they've moved onto this frame. Not doing anything. It's only three days after. Really, I'm just checking just to see. I'm supposed to double check what I put in here. Sometimes when you're working on the fly, you know, it's, it all happens so quickly, you don't even know what's happening. So there we go, there's those two charged cells. Good cat brood. Identical on that side. There's some eggs and larvae. I probably could have shaken a few more bees into this split, but they do have a fair bit of capped larvae, so that should work in my favour. You know, I've been thinking about this since I did the split, and I've been thinking more and more about the fact that I might just go and buy a queen and plonk it in here, change the genetics of our apiary up a little bit, mix it up, We've got another queen breeder who's, you know, in another state, a few hundred kilometres away, but they post out and they've got a really successful rate. Queens are about $35 Australian each. So it's not a lot of cost. Yeah, good brew pattern here as well. So I'm pretty happy with the way this is going there's a few forages out and about so the population it's it's not microscopic it's not super strong but i think they'll survive we have got a few days of rain coming up even pop on some fondant for these guys now the next hive we're going to be looking at is the green hive the green hive i'll put another box on I've moved the brood up to the top and put the queen below the excluder. But this hive, it's just massive. So I didn't get much footage of this moment, but this is when I was doing the split and also the demaray. The population's just out of control with this hive. It's about 11 o'clock in the morning and the boxes are still full of bees, even though all the foragers are out. So this is four days after the split in the Demaray, and just look at the population in that top box. It's just pulling out of the top. Now that top box, the yellow part, is actually the old brood nest which was down the bottom. So I've taken that brood nest out, put it up the top. We've got two honey supers between it and the bottom box, and in the bottom box we've put the queen on a frame of brood. So that's basically simulating a swarm for these guys. Their population's only going to increase because the queen will very quickly lay out that bottom box. So the job today, four days after the Demaray, is to check for queen cells, queen cups, and to knock them down. Now keep in mind that I also took a split off this hive, so there's a few empty frames in here. The other thing you could do with the Demaray is use it as a way of making a walk-away split with a full box of bees. So you could leave the frames as they are, not check for queen cells, go back six or seven days later, take the top box off and start a whole new hive with the top box. This brood nest basically remains untouched. It is as it is when it was down the bottom. As all these bees hatch, they will end up filling this top box with honey and nectar. 
but for now, they think that there's no queen because the pheromones are so far away in the bottom box. So that's why they're trying to actually make new queens. So there's a couple of cells here. That one's actually charged, so they're ready to go. Even though I made a split. Couple more there. That one was just a cup. That one's charged. I like to really muck them up when they're charged like that. I don't want them trying to rebuild them. I don't know if they will rebuild them if they're just a bit damaged. I imagine they wouldn't, but I always knock them right down. So I'll pop that back in. So this has really only got four frames of hatching brood at the top there. These ones are the empty frames that we put in. So we'll whip this box off and we'll have a look at the honey supers. The top one's absolutely chock-a-block. And this second box has been on for, I think, three weeks now. And it's looking pretty good. They've started capping it. Really nice spring honey. So this one will probably be ready to take off. Well, depending on if they fill out that upper brood box first, but I think this one will be ready to take off soon. I've been looking at these bees at night and we've had some warm nights and it is the noisiest hive in our apiary. The bees at night are just fanning non-stop. It sounds like an aeroplane. So we'll get the excluder off here. Now I just want to have a look in the bottom. I always get stressed out when I do the Demaray. You just never know. I didn't spot the queen in the bottom box when I put her in here. She was on the frame. I lost sight of her. So I just want to check to see how they're going. So this is four days after. They've started filling this out. There's actually a little bit of nectar in this bottom box. So that's a bit of a concern. They've started storing it in these newly drawn out frames. I just hope that they don't go honey bound on me. Fair bit of nectar in that one as well. It's another one of the new frames. So four days on. Yeah, a lot of nectar in that one. This is the original frame that was put in. Looks like most of the brood has emerged. There's actually some eggs in there. So eggs, what's that? One, two, three day old. That means that I think she's in the bottom box. I'm pretty confident she's in the bottom box. As I said earlier in this video, try not to be too hard on yourself when you beekeep. There's plenty of mistakes to be made. You will make them all. You will lose hives. You will lose queens. It's impossible to know everything. It's impossible to get everything right. The beekeepers that do do that, the YouTube beekeepers, they've been doing it for 10 years. The big guys, the Cayman Reynolds, Mike Barry, those sort of guys. If you watch their videos, even they make mistakes. So don't be hard on yourself. So I'll pop this excluder back on, pop these top boxes back on, and we'll have a quick peek into the nucleus hive. So this is our timber nucleus. I had this wax dipped along with my other hive that had AFB, just so I can start fresh. The first thing you'll notice is there's only four frames in this split. That's really because I've just run out of frames. I made up 40 a while ago. I've got some more on order. I don't think it really matters. We've got warm weather at the moment. Whether it's got four frames, six frames, eight frames, it really doesn't matter. So there's our queen cell. 
and there's actually another one. So all these hives, all these hives that I've made splits from are all the same genetics. So they're really good builders. Obviously one of them's really good with honey. Emerging brood. Probably could have bumped the population up a little bit. And there's another one of our queen cells. Two of our queen cells. So they've got plenty of work to do. Hopefully that queen will emerge in maybe, what's a queen? 16 days for queens, eight or nine days from the time they're laid until they're capped. So maybe in another three days thereabouts, we'll probably have a new queen in here. So we'll close these guys up. Now I've got a little bit of exciting news to share guys. So we're based in Australia down the bottom on the right in a little town called Geelong. It's relatively urban, lots of houses around. But we're going to be making a move. Not us personally, but just the bees. In a hope to expand down to a 100 acre block near a national park. It's bushland, it's beautiful. There's a wonderful spot under some trees for our bees. And we're allowed to have as many hives as we want. So stay tuned for that little exciting episode. It'll be coming in the next month or so. And in the meantime, we'd love for you to subscribe, throw a like, or throw a comment. See you on the next one, guys.